I started off with a flat peg, the same way as most guitar players do. A little plectrum, you know, or a flat peg, whatever you want to call it. And I still do use the flat peg for a lot of recording uh, rhythm parts with an acoustic guitar. Like this, you know, you just, I haven't got one, but it sounds like this. I'll use my nail instead and, you know, it's just... Whatever you're doing, in a, and it's an important thing because you get a better signal, is what I'm trying to say, than you do with your fingers. You get a clear, big sound, and it's generally speaking uh, probably better than the way I do it. And then what, what, I, what, what happened with me was uh, I didn't have the heart to ask my dad for an amplifier after he'd shelled out for an electric guitar. And I used to borrow friends' acoustic guitars, and that got me into folk joints. And, and there I learned how to do a basic finger pick. And um, I was listening to a lot of folk music too, different kinds. And the finger pick thing, um, you know, begins when you, you know, you start yourself, you're doing pretty slow, like two to the bar or, or one to the bar kind of thumb stuff. And once you build it up, you get to a list, like learn to ride a bike or swim, you get to a, like a, a four to the bar where the, you just put a simple chord on like a C, like that. And the thumb's going like from the fifth to the fourth to the sixth to the fourth, four. So five, four, six, four, like this. That's four beats of the bar, you know, and then the, and then you the fingers, you make the fingers start to go in like the little holes in between there. And then, once you got that off, it's, it's difficult. I mean, your fingers don't want to do it at first, but uh, you know you have to kind of stick at it. The chord itself doesn't really change. So you're just sort of picking around, still keeping the general pick going. And then I just developed that over the years. You know, you start to once I got started into country blues and listening to all of that sort of stuff and you, you know you may change the thumbs things like you're pushing it like more it become more like a piano and all that so you, and then it's more like piano playing you're starting to get a little more once you start picking you start to do you know It's like a little stride piano kind of style. Then back through ragtime, western swing, all that. And then slowly I just started breaking the rules where my thumb would start creeping up to the top strings and fingers down to the bottom so that the finger and thumb all over the whole thing instead of just sticking to the, you know, the usual rules. And, and so it just... Uh, the flat picking style and the finger picking style, you know, sort of started to fuse in together. And it's sort of, sort of just really a bit of a mishmash. When I was a kid, all I wanted to do was rock and roll and blues guitar play, you know, when, and that's still, you know, that's all. When I'm sitting at home most of the time, I'm playing very simple, but I'm just playing very simple music. Uh, but, uh, and when, when, you know, when I was 15 and heard people like Chan Atkins, I just thought, well, forget it, it's another planet, it'll never happen, so don't even try. But you get up into that picking area, I mean, it never did, <laughs> but you get up into that sort of area that got me playing with Chan people, just through picking and just going on picking and going on playing. And, you, you know, you get to places without really, without really re realizing, you just slow, so it's just a slow, it's a slow uh, business, you just creep forward very slowly and a lot of the time, you know, I'm sure a lot of guitarists are watching and they'll, you know, and I, you know, if I was to ask them, do you ever get, 
tired of what you're doing? And the answer is often yes, you know. But if you ask me that, it would be yes. It's just that you are where you're at. It's different to you. But you're actually moving forward very slowly without really realizing it, just by sitting down and playing a lot. I mean, I've never really structured a practice. I don't know why I wouldn't really... I mean, I just start to play and dither about then get up and go and have lunch, you know. If I've got a... a if I've got a film to do, it's better because that means I have to go, to go down there and get behind the guitar and, you know, do something. So <laughs> that's probably better for me to have something to do. Oh, but uh, what I really, really need, what I should have, is somebody who comes around and rings the doorbell, you know, and makes me do it. Uh, you know, someone who really knows their their stuff, you know, just come and tell me, give me some exercises and some lessons and things. When I'm on the road, uh, I sometimes sit down with Richard Bennett, and people like that, and, and try to pick something up, you know, and uh, because it just keeps the thing alive. Usually my way is, you know, usually it's just a, if I learn a new voicing or something, I'll maybe incorporate it into something that I'm writing.